We're obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Connie Fife, and you're here watching another episode of the Connie Fife Show. And if you're tuning in by audio and listening on our podcast, because we're streaming it out to over 250 networks around the world. And I want to thank you to our partners, the C-Suite Network and also Transformation Radio for all of the work they do to get us in front of you. So now um, it's, it's incredible. And I know I say this every single week that I bring on these phenomenal guests, the high achievers, the influencers, the crazy ones who are making a change in the world. And today's guest is doing exactly that. So let me just take uh, just a few minutes to do a proper introduction of her. She's uh, She needs no introduction. She really doesn't. The work that she is doing, her philanthropic work, her, her work on the, the golf course, um, playing literally with a handicap. Um, I mean, there is nothing, nothing holding her back. She was born without fingers on her left hand. She is known worldwide as the one handed lady golfer. You're never going to forget her ever. <laughs> she strives to bring attention to golfing success stories of people with physical, cognitive, sensory, health, and age related challenges. She, she does not live by the word disabled. She lives by the word abled, that we are all able to do something and to do something great. Despite her own challenges, she inspires and motivates others to get out of bed and get out of their head. Now, how many times have you heard that? And I'm sure that you've all heard that it's all about the mindset. You want to be an entrepreneur? It's all about the mindset. You want to be a great golfer? It's all about your mindset. And it truly, truly is. She's reached millions across the globe and has inspired them from her public appearances, presentations, on and off air, and she serves as an example for individuals. She's an advocate for individuals with disabilities and challenges all over the world. So welcome right here into the Connie Fife studio, Gina Rojas. Hey, hey, everybody. I like to start off with a good stump bump. Only mm -hmm. I had it first. I had it first. <laughs> you did have it first. You did. You did. Um, Jen, I've just been impressed with you from the moment that we connected, from the moment that we met. Your, your story is incredible. You're an advocate for so many individuals out there. Um, I truly believe that you don't even see yourself, again, and you've said it, with, with a handicap but that you are abling and you are helping and striving and lifting others up to, to do better with what they have. So I just want to start by really if, um, what's your story? Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you're just so motivating and so warming. So what is your story? Well, um, first of all, Connie, thank you very much. I really do appreciate, um, we've gotten to know each other a little bit throughout the past couple of weeks and I'm really, really honored um, to, to be here, to be able to share this with you. Um, well, my journey started, of course, uh, before I was even born, <laughs> apparently I must've had some destiny, uh, in my shaping. Um, well, I was born in 1962 and, uh, was born during a time when there was, um, mothers that were being part of a trial called, uh, with thalidomide. And they were given this pill called thalidomide for morning sickness and sleeplessness. Well, the pill did wonders. Um, it, it worked its magic. 
Uh, what they didn't know, though, is is how it was going to affect the fetuses. Mm. And during these trials, the the actual it was on the market over in Germany, and and the trials were here in the U.S. Um, many many babies were being born if they were lucky enough to be born um, with limb deficiencies, limb differences, um, internal challenges, um, economic, uh, endocrinal, uh, however you want to say that. Uh, I have that too. Um, just uh, there were a lot of challenges for babies that were being born because of the side effects. Um, so make a long story. We'll try not to make it so long. Uh, mm. We're going to fast forward. Um, Dad was in the Navy. Uh, so we moved every we moved every couple of years. And um, just like most military families do, we, we do our two-year stint, and then we pull up and we move, and I started a new school again. Uh, during that time, how was how was that? I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, not not only were you a new kid in a new school with a handicap. I mean, I'm just envisioning the bullying that would have yeah. taken place. Well, they have a name for it now, uh, fortunately, um, just to identify it. But um, it's not being picked. It's it's not being asked to be part of the team. Uh, you know, it's asked last if you have to have her, <laughs> mm. um, you know, it, they, they bullied me to the point where I was beat up. I was called names. Um, mm. I got locked in a locker for three and a half hours once, um, mm. a terrifying experience. And I, and to this day, I'll never forget it. Mm. And I always, always like to, you know, kind of express the fact that, you know, all those events happened to me and they happened to me for a reason, because mm. now I have been on the other side of it. It is my story. Um, I have been that 13 year old girl that nobody wanted to have be part of the group or be mm. part of the girls or, you know, so, so fast forward a little faster and I met my husband, my husband, uh, is an avid golfer and he and his friends and his friends' wives were meeting every Saturday and Sunday out on the golf course, um, eight o'clock, they would play their morning round. And when they got to the 15th hole, sometimes they'd be nice enough to call me to come up and have lunch. <laughs> which I did. <laughs> right. And just like all morning, all golfers do, they talk about their morning round. Yeah. Every shot. <laughs> I don't know how I can't even count that many on my holes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so then sometimes they would go back out and then I would go back home and I started feeling like that 13 year old girl again. And I just said yeah. to my husband one day, I said, you know what, how can we figure out, how can I, how can I get out there and be part of this? So it took a lot of trial and error, um, mm -hmm. a two-handed golfer. So it's not something that many, many people or instructors have been exposed to. Right. So, well, it sounds, sounds like your, it sounds like your husband <laughs> was, was very, very supportive in your learning. Yes. Yes. Actually he's, um, he's extremely supportive, uh, not just in me learning, but helping me be to the best of my potential. Um, okay. being someone that maybe has not been exposed to golfers with differences before. Okay. Um, there's this whole other world of golf that a lot of people <clears throat> don't, don't know about. And so again, trial and error, we chipped away, chipped away at it. I'm good with puns. And, uh, and finally it just clicked. And I started going to the golf course with him. When we go away on vacation, we went for our, 25th anniversary and got to play Kapalua and, you know, enough for me to be able to get out there and just roll a ball, have fun, be around him, be around the community that the lifestyle that golf brings. And at the time, um, I was working with the March of Dimes and I was using um, my ability to play golf to start conversations about birth defects, which brings it back to the March of Dimes. Okay, right. And um, I was a community director for Hudson County. I ran the walk at Liberty State Park. Very high profile venue walk. Right. Um, was in charge of all of Hudson County, getting the sponsors, getting mm -hmm. the walk together, getting the volunteers. So I thought that, you know, that's something that was my calling. I thought maybe that's what my purpose that's was. That's where you needed to, needed to be, needed, needed to fit. What what do you yeah. think out of all of this um, to to help our listeners fully understand? Yeah. What do you think is the most important um, characteristic 
that someone needs to be successful in whatever it is that they're attempting to do. Yeah, whether it's golf or anything else, um, it's being able to question yourself in the right manner. So if I were to have questioned myself and said, hey, can I play golf? Well, no, you can't. You only have one hand. The no keeps me from even trying. What I did was not knowingly was the right way to go about it is to say, how can I? How? How can I figure this out? Because yes. if I say how, I afford myself the trial and error. If I say no, I don't even try. So right. the how turned into, well, how? <clears throat> if that didn't work, let me how something else and let me how something else and let me how something else until I get it. Right. And I got it and I just clicked. And once it clicked, it was like, okay, here we go. I started go. started really talking a lot about my ability to play golf mm -hmm. and using that as the conduit to start the conversation about bird defects. And now it has switched. It is now switched to um, being, uh, I, got, I got laid off. Uh, a lot of people did. <laughs> right, uh, right. But you, I, but, you, but you took that and you turned that into a positive. And, yeah. and what you did next is really incredible. It's really remarkable. Let's take a really quick break and we'll come right back and I want to chat about that. Sure. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find The Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Five. You're Unstoppable Diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFiveShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. And we're back, and this is Connie Fife, and you're listening to The Connie Fife Show. Today, we are speaking with one of the most crazy ones out there who is changing the world, Gianna Rajos. Gianna, um, the one thing, again, that you've, you know, you lost your job uh, with, mm -hmm. with the March of Dimes, but you turn everything that you did, learning to play golf, helping and educate and being an advocate for people with handicap, and then you started a foundation, the yeah. adaptive golfers. It actually just came out of the brainchild of all the amazing resources that my research that I had to dig and find and my husband and I, um, we wound up developing some amazing relationships with, with some of the organizations and some of the different types of equipment and resources in the search and the journey to find my game and my golf equipment. So a friend of mine challenged me and said, hey, you know, you kind of got something here. Um, you know, you're able to relate to both sides. I can talk to the individuals who have the challenges because I also live it, breathe it every day. Mm -hmm. I know how they're, 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 what they go through. I know what, what they go through inside and outside. Um, and, and then I also have the ability to build rapport, which came from my moving around all the time and really having that struggle and challenge to build rapport every time we move, start all over again. Now that characteristic has brought me to be able to really talk with not just the individuals who have the challenges, but mm -hmm. the industry and not just the golf industry, but talking to corporate um, about the DE and I initiatives, talking to uh, the health and rehabilitative industries, um, the prosthetic industries, the social services. There's just so many ways that this one little gift of golf, this one little nugget, I'm able to now share this and use that as that conduit for those discussions. Right. You learn how to golf, not just for the fun of the game, but you learn how to golf because it is your life. And you're using that, like you said, that one little conduit, that one little tool that, you know, that that just takes, takes people to, to a whole new realm of, you know, well, if she can do it, why, why can't I? And, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be just for the game of golf, but again, you using that as a metaphor and showing other people that 
you know, there, uh, there is always a how. There's no can't in our vocabulary. There's only Absolutely. the how in the vocabulary to do it. So then you reached out, you reached out to the LB, LPGA, the PGA, mm-hmm. all of the, <clears throat> the golfing associations and talking about your adaptive golfers program. Yeah. And, and they, and they loved it. And you do yeah. so much work with them as well as their, as a spokesperson for the, for the adaptive golfers. So, um, and I was going to say this to the end, but let our, let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find out about the adop- adaptive golfers and how they can also donate to your programs. Absolutely. Well, I thank you for that because, uh, you know, our uh, programs are free to our participants, but they're not free to me. <laughs> right. So uh, we do we do have to be sustainable, and 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 you know it's it's not something where we we're we're hoping that the message gets across the board to the larger organizations. Also, that you you mentioned um, the PGA, the LPGA, they're all having these discussions. A lot of corporate organizations are having discussions about the E and I. Um, and, and just make sure that you're inviting abilities to the table. Um, you can certainly reach out to me at any time. Um, mm. I'm at adaptivegolfers.org is our website. Uh, we are about to relaunch the website. Um, when we do the relaunch, it will be probably early summer, if not late spring. We're getting there. Yeah, yeah. I always, always, always take something. Websites, yeah. I always say websites are never yeah. done. It is never- well, we're we're about to relaunch it. When we do relaunch it, we're also launching our adaptive golfers player development program. Okay. This particular program is to educate not just the industry, um, that golf industry, but also, like I said, the allied health and, and mm-hmm. rehabilitative industries. We're teaching on top of them already knowing to teach golf, how to teach someone other than the able-bodied, for lack of better terms, two-handed, two-legged player. Right. It's not something that teachers have come across or been exposed to. So we've developed a program where we're going to help transfer that other layer of knowledge and, and really not only have them as an education piece to right. get their extra credit units, but this is a life transformation, not just for the individuals that you're helping, but also for yourself. Um. Mm. So we're really hoping to be able to launch all of this, uh, like I said, early summer. Um, yeah, so I mean, you have some some great initiatives. Us. I mean, you're also working with the VA. Yes. Yes. You know, and and again, I, I, you know, with the VA, you have, of course, disability, you know, with with limbs or li- loss of limbs, but also the emotional aspect of the of it, too, where when they learn that, you know, they can come back, they, you know, they can be. You know, and, and I don't even want to say the word great, but they can find the love of the game, which in turn finds the love that they have for themselves as well. Correct. And I really believe that whether it's from status, being a civilian, a first responder, uh, a, a veteran, um, whether you're uh, somebody who is ex- has been exposed to traumatic experiences, um, golf is a beautiful distraction and it's an opportunity um, that's not, it's an individual activity. You're not throwing yes. a ball. You're not catching a ball. You don't have right. to be good. There's not a linebacker that's going to tackle you if you have a <laughs> right. bad shot. Your friends might, I can't guarantee you that, but um, you know. No, but you're, but you're right. To, it's, it's, it's that, it's that in, yeah. individual sport. Um, I, I, I'm in a family of golfers and tried golfing myself. And my, my, my son told me one day, he's a mom. He goes, you look awfully great. The, you know, my outfit match, the clubs match. He goes, be my caddy for the day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? I always like to leave it with ball in the hole. Don't care if you roll it with your nose or even if it gets there, you're part of something. It's, it's part of human nature to be accepted. It's part of human nature yes. to be, be social and be part of something else. And yes. for me, I be, I would be remiss not to say that I kind of love the game too. It helps, <laughs> you yeah. know. It, okay. it 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 it's something that um, it was an accomplishment that you know I didn't think I was ever going to do. Right. You know, we didn't even touch upon, and I was a march and I was poster child as a little girl, and I actually sat on all Palmer's lap, not knowing who he was or what golf was. Oh, and wow. so I really were- wish I had the time 
with him to come back and say, look what I'm doing now. You are groomed at an early age to, to take on golf and didn't, didn't yeah. even realize it. Didn't even realize it. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm going to take you right now into the hot seat. And, okay. and, and something that you actually had mentioned about how we are all social. And of course, quarantine in this past year made many of us um, I don't want to say unsocial, but, you know, we were quarantined and many people were struggling with depression and, yeah. and, you know, putting food on their table. And, you know, there's so, so many things that, that people have been struggling for, um, with this past year. So um, how, how have you seen the people that you work with? How have you seen them affected by this? It depends on... Um... Some of the, the individuals have other challenges um, health-wise that put mm -hmm. them in a compromise. Um, frankly, we had to put, and we have still on hold, we had to put our clinics on hold just because yes. a lot of the demographics that we have have challenges and we don't right. want to put anybody in harm's way. We do right. a lot of things indoors where it's accessible, totally accessible. We don't have to worry about environment. Mm -hmm. um, so. We'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be getting those going soon. But what I have seen, I have seen golf explode. I've seen people in the industry talk to me and tell me golf has just gotten so big that, um, really? you know, they're really, they're, the stores can't keep up with, with the equipment. Um, wow. I, I'm also a, uh, a, an adaptive ambassador for the U.S. female representing Ping. Right. Um, they they have a tremendous amount of you know months of backup because they're getting so busy. So and you were awesome. and you you were responsible for that. I, I noticed that that you you were dedicated of getting um, dedicated to get that team going. You were very much. Yeah, responsible I'm starting for that an team. adaptive golf hers team. Um, okay, and I just really want to get more out there and also be the example for young girls and women. And that's where our collaborations okay. with the LPGA come in, the girls golf, right. you know, getting those girls that have the challenges to come out too. Mm -hmm. um, they right. haven't really been invited yet. And that's mm -hmm. really all it'll take is just an invitation. So just an invitation, right. That. And someone we like yourself encouraging, yeah. encouraging that, them that to do that. What has, uh, what has been your biggest release during the quarantine since you haven't been able to get out and golf? <laughs> I also had a total hip replacement. This is the least of my worries. Oh, well, that, uh, that was probably a good thing that you were in. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had two total knee replacements years ago. Right. So I have two total knee replacements. I just wow. December 18th had the hip replacement. I do have three discs in my lower back and my up in my neck. This is the least of my worries. So I don't want to hear oh. any whining or any excuses. Right. That's no excuses. Golf is for everyone, whether you've got age, illness, injuries. We all have things that happen and things that change. Right. You know, it's just being adaptable. And that's really all it's about is just adapting wow. your game or your. Equipment. Yes, you are truly unstoppable. Mm -hmm. So then what did you learn? And I don't even know if you what could say you, you did. You know what kept me sane? Um, I've made about three blankets. I'm a big crocheter. Oh, okay. So, so you're crocheting. Like I, I sit and crochet. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's exercise. It's exercise for the mind. Yeah. I do crossword puzzles. So that, I always say that's, that's my exercise. That's my exercise for the mind. Well, we've been able to get out. We're able to get out as long as we go like either to the driving range. I mean, the course is okay. just opened this past week by us. So we're, we've been out a couple, I've been out a couple times already. Okay. All right. Good. So, what has been the greatest advice that you've ever received and still practice that advice today. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't mm. give it a try. Give it, give it a try, change it. You know, that's really where the whole how comes from. Um, because I've had to do that most of my life. So that, that, that was one thing that just really ingrained in me. Um, so I look at each situation as a challenge. How okay. can I do it? In fact, I'm so bad at accepting and allowing help. Don't ever ask me when you see me putting something up, if you can give me a hand. Right. Because I will say, I'll take your left one, but I don't need any help. Oh, a little okay. stubborn. 
they discovered. Sounds yeah. that way. Don't want to yeah. miss. Don't, don't want to miss with Gina Ross. Well, Gina, um, you you you're just a force of a force of nature. Um, you know, an advocate for so many, so many individuals and so many owe you a debt of gratitude for the work that you're that you're doing. And and again, you're you're changing the world. And it's, again, it's not just about golf, but it's about changing the world and helping others see it differently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I want to thank you for being here. You, oh, you've thank been- you. Yes, you've been phenomenal. And if you just want to let our folks know one more time, um, again, where they can go and learn more about your foundation. And uh, oh, yeah. please, everyone, make a donation for this incredible, incredible program. Well, thank you again, Connie. And it's an honor. Um, you can certainly reach out to me at uh, adaptivegolfers.org. Um, and if you're really, really curious and you want to see me swing, just Google one handed lady golfer. It's okay. That's what I call myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it's what everybody was whispering when they saw me anyway. So we just got out in front of it. <laughs> Why not? Right. Why not? Why not? Well, Gianna, thank you for being here. You've been, you're, you're, you're just, oh, thank you. And for everyone, Gianna is available. She is on the speaking tour and she is offering her programs and clinics and you can learn more about her and about her availability at talentconcier.co our sister agency and the folks over there are just incredible and they would be happy to work with you to get Gianna scheduled on your next roster for your next conference so I will chat with you over there but again this is Connie Fife and you're here with the Connie Fife show and I want to thank you for coming back and visiting with us each and every week and always know that we care and trust in you and that we are all unstoppable together. Hey y'all, it's Connie Fife. Thank you for listening to the Connie Fife Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to the ConnieFifeShow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.